it's going to impact not just one particular sector, but basically everything that, that humans currently use their brains to do. Artificial intelligence is developing at an exponential rate. By the end of this century, some research indicates that a computer eye may match a human's smartness. After that, according to Nick Bostrom, machine intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make surpassing humans. Bostrom, a technologist and philosopher, challenges us to consider carefully the world that we are currently creating, which is powered by thinking computers. Will our intelligent machines uphold humankind and our morals, or will they have morals of their own? I work with a bunch of mathematicians, philosophers, and computer scientists, and we sit around and think about the future of machine intelligence, among other things. Some people think that some of these things are sort of science fiction, far out there crazy, but I like to say, okay, let's look at the modern human condition. This is the normal way for things to be. Have you ever wondered about the fundamental structure of your reality? Have you ever considered the possibility that the world you see around you is actually a computer-generated simulation run by an advanced artificial intelligence? Nick Bostrom popularized the notion, also known as the simulation hypothesis, which holds that we are essentially the same as a character in a video game. Nick Bostrom is not concerned with the same issues that the majority of philosophers are. The Oxford professor has written about a number of topics, including whether morality can survive in an infinitely big cosmos, the idea that we are all living in a simulation, and the chance that all intelligent species on Earth may go extinct within the next century. In his book Superintelligence, he explores the possible outcomes of a world run by robots in the event that general artificial intelligence develops. It's an easy basic argument. According to a number of academics, artificial intelligence will eventually reach a level where it can both surpass human intelligence and grow exponentially, causing an intelligence explosion. These incredibly clever machines might theoretically be employed for human purposes. They could answer impossible scientific puzzles and heal illnesses. In the worst situation, they might completely replace human labor, allowing people to stop working and comfortably exist in the labor of the robots. What danger can the emergence of superintelligence bring? It would present existential hazards, meaning it might endanger human extinction and our ability to realize a future worth the cosmos in the long run. It appears that most potential outcomes would have consequences comparable to those in this scenario, determining an ultimate objective that would genuinely benefit humanity, and then devising a means of creating the first superintelligence with such an extraordinary objective constitute a significant portion of the task that lies ahead. Although there is still uncertainty about how to accomplish this, we have made some progress in that we now know that a number of seemingly realistic strategies would not be effective. How much longer till a machine achieves superintelligence? No one is aware. We found that the median opinion among AI experts in our opinion survey was that there was a 50% chance that by the middle of the century, human-level machine intelligence would be achieved. However, there is a lot of ambiguity about that. It might occur much sooner or later. We should be considering probability dispersed throughout a large range of potential arrival dates rather than just one specific year. Is this similar to Terminator? A good story bias exists, which restricts the kind of situations that can be examined in books and films to those that are amusing. There might not be much overlap between this set and the probable situations group. For instance, a story must typically feature human-like protagonists, a few of whom are crucial, who must overcome a succession of progressively challenging obstacles. Additionally, the story must take a long enough time to allow for the development of intriguing plot difficulties. Perhaps a small group of people, each with a unique set of skills, must get past some interpersonal obstacles in order to work together to fight a supposedly unbeatable machine that turns out to have one fatal fault, most likely connected to some form of emotional hang-up. One type of scenario that would not be seen on the big screen is one in which nothing out of the ordinary occurs until our unexpected demise, at which point the Earth is transformed into a massive computer that spends the ensuing billion years performing some arcane computation. However, such a scenario is much more realistic than a platoon of men with square jaws fending off a machine gun-wielding robot army. 
Couldn't we simply turn it off by pulling the plug if machines were to surpass human power? Taking out the batteries? It is important to remember that humans sometimes find it difficult to turn off systems that lack free will and the capacity for planning. Is there a way to turn off the internet completely? A super-intelligent entity that roams freely would probably be able to predict when people could try to turn it off and take preventative measures to ensure that doesn't happen. Plans produced by a real super-intelligence would probably function, in contrast to the A-generated plots in Hollywood movies, which are actually conceived by humans and geared to enhance storyline satisfaction. Couldn't the other great apes just batch our skulls in if they felt we were invading their territory? If there was a tiny off switch at the back of each person's neck, would they have a far higher chance of success? So should we give up on creating robots? The issue that Nick Bostrom addresses in the book is unrelated to robotics at all. The danger is not in the body, but rather in the thought that potential machine intelligence may harbor. A super intelligent will likely find a way. For example, a super intelligence that at first has no way to influence the physical world directly might be able to control people to carry out its orders or provide it with resources to create its technological framework. So one might wonder if we ought to give up on creating AIs. Given the unlikely nature of any future interactions, I find that inquiry to be somewhat pointless. Large numbers of people from all over the world work in software engineering, neuroscience, statistics, hardware design, machine learning, and robotics, among other fields, where there are strong incentives to make small steps forward along a variety of paths that may eventually contribute to machine intelligence. How much of our destiny have we already given up to technology? The future has never been in the hands of the human species. Humans have been divided into many groups, each pursuing their own, sometimes contradictory, objectives. The trajectory of technical and economic growth that has resulted has happened almost entirely without regard for the future of humanity and much long-term planning or global cooperation. Imagine a school bus full of boisterous and squabbling children speeding down a mountain road. Humanity is that. However, if we face forward, we will notice that the driver's seat is vacant. This is what Nick Bostrom thinks of AI. Although it may be more difficult for us to affect the long-term future in a multipolar outcome, different institutional arrangements may still have an impact. However, when these digital minds multiply and keep changing in opposition to one another, it is unclear if those institutions will remain stable. According to Bostrom, in such cases, perhaps international cooperation will be required to prevent advancements that could go against human values, depending on which way the AIs are aimed. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you want to stay updated with more great content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the red button and ringing the notification bell so you never miss any future content from us. Your support means the world to us.